Hello everyone. My name is Galit and this is the Galactic News. So I finally moved to my new home in Maui. I'm very happy. I'm setting up my props and hopefully within time when my ship went arrive, I'll have my TV and I can show you the charts. But today I want to talk to you about Neptune. It's a big subject and Neptune just went retrograde a couple of days ago on the 28th, just together with the new moon in Cancer. So we had kind of a double water effect, maybe a triple water because Neptune represents water. Neptune is in Pisces, it's water. And we had a new moon in Cancer. So we were having a lot of emotions. Are you experiencing this? I know I'm experiencing this. And I want to talk about Neptune in general. Neptune is that part of us. And wherever you have Neptune in your chart, this is that part of tapping into our higher self, our higher spirituality, our soul, our connection to God, our connection to things that are not seen, not touched, but we can feel them. But we can't really, they're not tangible. If Saturn stands on the one side, and shows us everything that is physical and tangible and concrete in reality, Neptune is on the other side. It is everything we cannot give words to, but we feel it. So it's a big part of us when we are tapping into our self, into our higher self, into our spiritual self, this is our Neptune placement. So wherever you have Neptune in your chart, that sign and that house life department means a lot to you because it is some place that is calling you, but it is so obscure that you need to figure out what it means for you. So let's talk about the cycle of Neptune. Neptune goes direct for half of the year and retrograde for the other half of the year. So if you're born with Neptune retrograde, it is not a coincidence. 50% uh, of the people are born with Neptune retrograde in their chart because of that notion. So Neptune, when it goes direct, it is kind of inspiring. It is giving us um, extra creativity, inspiration. It is a luring, magical feeling that we want to follow. We don't even know what it is, but we want to discover it's all about magic somewhere that is magical and we want to follow that. Now, when it goes retrograde, suddenly that magical veil is being uplifted and we are faced with deeper truth, deeper truth about ourselves and deeper truth about our surrounding, maybe deeper truth that leads to uncovering where we were uh, in illusion, in delusion. And we were telling ourselves all kinds of fantastic stories that were not necessarily true. So whenever Neptune goes retro, we have a really good opportunity to uncover something, to see something better, something we couldn't see before because we believed in that story. We were in fantasy land. Now, fantasy land and stories have a really positive side because that's the only way when we create that dream that we can move forward and follow the dream. So it's a dream. It's something that is not realistic yet, but we believe it to be true. So we're following it. This is how we manifesting. On the other end, if we follow a false dream that we're trying to persuade ourselves that is may be true for us, but it turns out to be a false dream, we were delusional to believe that, then we will uncover some unpleasant truth. And that is the part of Neptune that is delusional. But let's see what happens with Neptune. So Neptune went into Pisces around to, in 2011. This was the first time it went into Pisces and it changed everything because Pisces, Neptune is the natural ruler of Pisces. So it's kind of a double whammy where it brings us immense spirituality. And look what happened in the last 10, 12 years. There is a spiritual evolution and revolution. And this is Neptune. It is connecting every one of us to a higher belief. Many of us don't need um, a middleman, the church, the synagogue anymore in order to tap into our spirituality, right? We are all figuring it out and having a direct connection to our higher self, to God, to the universe, whatever you want to call it, because of Neptune in Pisces. 
Then Neptune did its thing and went direct and retrograde, and it's covering about two, three degrees a year. Neptune cycle takes 165 years to do a round trip around the sun. That's a long time. Nobody, nobody lives that long to see a whole circle of Neptune. So we get Neptune to transit just a part of our chart. Every sign that Neptune transit, it would transit for about 14 years, give and take, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, but that's about it. So it will only cover a few degrees in our chart um, every year. So every year, it's a very long process where Neptune goes. And we need to figure out what it means for us within that specific year. So Neptune went retro on the 28th at 25 degrees of Pisces. Where is it in your chart? Does it hit any personal planet in your chart? Does it create aspects to any planets in your chart? Where is Pisces in your chart? And what kind of mutable planets you have? Give it an orb of, let's say, a degree or two, not too much, because as I said, it's a very slow process, so maybe two degrees. So if it squares something, if it opposes something, it means a lot for you. So try to delineate and understand the symbolism of what kind of aspect that Neptune is doing for you. And what does it want to uncover for you? What kind of truth you're uncovering? Neptune will go direct in December, December 3rd at 22 degrees Pisces. So we have a three degrees or between when it went retrograde, it went back to a territory it covered already and it will go direct again. Where is 22 degrees Pisces for you? And what happened since Neptune was already there? What happened to you when Neptune passed that degree? What were you going through? That will probably come back again, the same issues, but in a different spin. Now you'll be able to see something deeper and maybe uncover something for yourself. It will go uh, retro again next year in June at 27 degrees Pisces. Then it will go direct next year on 2023 in December. It will go direct at 24 degrees Pisces. Then again, retro uh, in June 2024, 29 degrees of Pisces. This, this is uncharted territory for Neptune. Those degrees were never covered. 27 degrees, 29 degrees. We're getting ahead. Neptune is moving slowly, but creating uh, realizations in this uncharted territory. So you can project if you have planets in mutable signs, you can project. And if you have planets in water signs, this will trine your water signs planet. This is a good trine, right? It will give you immense creativity to explore something, some depth within yourself and be much more creative. Maybe there is a creative endeavor that you're interested in and that you're doing. So this will give you the push. But if it's a square opposition, then you need to face something that you didn't want to face. And it's usually good to face those things because um, if we are in denial, we better face it sooner than later and heal it, whatever that may be. Then Mercury is going uh, direct again uh, on, in 2024, 27 degrees of Pisces. But look at that. This is the year Neptune changes signs and goes into Aries. It's going to take place on June 4th, 2025, Mercury, uh, Neptune will go retrograde at two degrees Aries. Now, this is the year that many things are changing. We are going into a new era in astrology. Three outer planets are going to change signs. Uranus is going to go into Gemini. Pluto is going to go into Aquarius and Neptune is going into Aries. This is huge. It is rarely happening that three major planets, three slow planets like these are changing signs at the same time. I'll talk about it in a different video. What's the implication of that? But let's just mention that actually 2026 will be the year of, Mer of Neptune going into Aries. This is the Neptune in Aries era. That's where it's really going to start. And that would change so much of our perspective in regards to our oceans. I think we'll see a lot of ocean discoveries, uh, things that are related to water. We will change the way we use water. We will change the way we understand what water means for us. And 
there will be a lot of new discoveries about water because Neptune is water and Aries is pioneering. So put those two together, we'll see a lot of inventions related to water. I think we also see a lot of new inventions in drugs. Neptune is drugs. It can be delusional drugs, but it can be also mind altering drugs uh, in the positive sense of the world. We are now experimenting with that since the 60s, actually. We've been experimenting with psychedelics. And I think um, 2026 will bring us new kind of drugs that will heal us on deeper level and that will allow us to connect with our spirituality, creativity, and our uh, sense of um, deep connection to the universe that will ex expand and be, we, 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 so many new inventions will come up with that. I think the metaverse will explode at that time and we will all have chance uh, to learn in a different way through 3D, augmented reality, all those uh, technology advancements will come to life in a much bigger and um, much more usable sense of the world. Of the world, And I think mental health will also come to the forefront because Neptune is responsible for our mental health and we'll understand that mental health is really related to many other parts is in our system. It is not just our mental health. It is part of our system and we will change a lot of uh, maybe our food, the way we treat food uh, for mental health. We'll understand things in a much grander perspective, more holistic perspective. So this is uh, my two cents about Neptune in uh, the last transit of Neptune in Pisces going into Aries, uh, the Neptune in Aries era. And it's going to be an interesting transition for you in your chart. Where is this happening in your chart? What kind of houses uh, do you have Pisces on? And what kind of house, where is the, the house that you have Aries on? Because this is where the transition is taking place for you. So check it out. Where is it in your chart? And how are you going to be affected by all that? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give me a like, thumbs up. And if you didn't subscribe to my channel, I'll be more than happy if you do. And I'll see you here. And in the meantime, enjoy the day and become the best version of yourself today and every day. I will see you next time.